All right, meanwhile, let's bring in Sean Hannity. Sean, great to see you. Dress casual. Okay. Great to see you in New York where you're truly home. I wouldn't be surprised if you moved back here soon. Uh, I, would. <laughs> I would. I would. I do. I wouldn't I, count on I that. I have sources. You clearly don't watch a uh, show. <laughs> <laughs> what is your take of the state of the race right now? Everyone's um, got their opinion. I want yours. Look, uh, let's start out with where we are with early voting. Uh, Going into tomorrow, we got to keep this in mind. Everyone at home, please keep this in mind. We have 80 to 90 million more Americans that will vote tomorrow. Right. That's a lot of votes that have yet to be cast. Going in, Kamala Harris has a math problem, and that is that they way underperformed, especially in the swing states, in terms of what their target numbers needed to be to go in with the lead that they wanted, and, and they just didn't get there. And they're right. way off. They're off by double digits based on all the numbers I've been studying and seeing, and we all go over. So what she now has to do is something the Democratic Party has never really pulled off before. That's her challenge, and that is to get people to the polls day of. Right. Do I think that Ricky Martin, Lady Gaga, and... Uh, J-Lo, Willie Nelson. Yeah, are going to pull put it Oprah. over the top? I don't really think so. I think the days of Hollywood celebrities, you know, influencing people are long gone. And, however, what I am telling people is if you, and I'll say this as loudly as I can, if you live in Georgia, North Carolina, if you're in Pennsylvania, if you're in Wisconsin, Michigan, if you're in Arizona, Nevada, just assume that your one vote will be the determining vote in this election. The polls are that tight. And, they are. Um, and I'm following it closely. And, however, I mean, I, I can argue both sides of this. We were supposed to have a red wave in 2020, right? That didn't materialize. Right. We're, everyone wants to analyze it, but there's really only one poll that matters, and that's tomorrow. And when you have 80 to 90 million more people, that, that's a lot what of people do you have to say, vote. What do you say to the person that hasn't voted yet? Um, got a, a, a text message yesterday from someone that said the pastor of their church, she talked to the wife, and the wife said, I just can't vote for Donald Trump. What do you say to that pastor's wife? You know, one of the problems Kamala has had this whole campaign is she can't be who she really is. I mean, are they really going to run on this idea that, you know, the manly man is Tim Walls, who wants to put feminine hygiene products in boys' bathrooms in school, uh, that can't load his own shotgun? That, that's kind of a tough sell. That's their sell to men. What they're selling to women... And this is what Kamala's trying to do, too. She's trying to get a path to the White House based on a lot of lies. She's saying Donald Trump will have a national abortion ban. False. Mm -hmm. She's saying that he will li limit access to contraception. False. That he doesn't support IVF. False. So he's lying to women. He's, you know, every single demographic. If you look at the numbers, the first three years of the Trump administration, the people that prospered in record numbers, not seen in 60 years, were African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, Asian-Americans, women in the workplace, African-American youth unemployment. Right. So for her message, you know, she's trying to say she's pro-gun. She's trying to, you know, she can't run away from her fracking position, which she said she would put a ban on, or offshore drilling. She co-sponsored the Green New Deal with Bernie Sanders, $93 trillion. Nobody really has asked her about it. Right. Um, has she really changed her mind? I don't think so. Is she really going to run on a position that I'm going to be tough on the borders now after she supports decriminalizing illegal immigration, free food, housing, health care, education, sure. sex change operations, which is fine as long as the taxpayers right. don't have to pay for it, right? And am a path to citizenship yeah, amnesty. You, you can go down the whole list and... It really is a binary choice. They, the two candidates could not be more different. But, Sean, I think it comes down to something that you've been talking about, we've been talking about for four years. And that is, since COVID, everything costs more. And during the Biden administration, things did not go down. And the, uh, Nikki Haley writes about it in the op-ed where, op right, op where she supports uh, Donald Trump, says vote for Trump. Easy choice. She says uh, things are... The average family spends $13,000 more in annual costs for their family. Unless you've got a $13,000 raise over four years, you're $13,000 in the hole. I mean, this is the bottom line. And I keep going back to the simple, basic question. You know, there's two things that drive elections, peace and prosperity. And then you ask the question, the infamous Reagan question, are right. you better off than you were four years ago? Okay, is your border more safe and secure? We know the answer. You know, is 
is, are you more safe and secure in your small town or big city? Right. No. Are you paying more for every item you buy in every store you go to? Yes. Do you like paying a buck fifty more for gasoline? Brian does, but everybody else doesn't. Right. Besides that. <laughs> so let's talk about what Harris had a chance to Prop 36 over in California. They're redoing their criminal justice. They're revisiting it to yeah. actually put felons in get jail. Get tough. And get tough up and down the measure. She voted. So here's what she said. This is an opportunity, I think, for a candidate to show I am tough on crime despite my track record. Listen to what she said. Have you returned the ballot to California, and how did you vote on Prop 36? So I have, my ballot is on its way to California, and I'm going to trust the system that it will arrive there. Um, and I am not going to talk about the vote on that because, I, honestly, it's the Sunday before the election, and I don't intend to create a, an endorsement one way or another around it, so. Axios called her the no-comment candidate. Um, what do you take on that? She has a chance to show she's tough on crime. Look what I voted for. Yeah. It, again, this goes back to the problem. Every position she'd ever taken, mandatory gun confiscation, her position on the border, you know, her support of a bail fund four days after a police precinct is burned to the mm -hmm. ground, and saying on CBS... The rioters won't stop, shouldn't stop, and we're not going to stop supporting them. Every position from the Green New Deal, elimination of private health care, no fracking, ban on fracking, ban on offshore drilling, mm -hmm. not securing the borders. It's a medieval vanity project. She can't be who she is. She's not authentic. She has an answer. She voted a certain way. Tell the American people, why won't you be honest with the American people? This likely will be her downfall. I would argue that she can't expose who she really is because if she does, the American people would reject it as right. extreme and radical, yeah. which I believe she is. That's right. Either if she announced what she, how she voted, she's either a flip-flopper or she's so radical right. and extreme, which is probably the one. I picked the latter. Yeah, I <laughs> Sean, tonight at 9 o'clock, he's not going to be guaranteed to wear that outfit. I don't even know if he's wearing a tie. It's, wait a minute. It's, from, uh, it's a Ralph Lauren. Very fancy. No, I'm just saying. Well, we said a uh, great still picture of you taken by a professional mm -hmm. photographer. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Bill Hemmer, and, uh, thanks so much, Sean. Great to, see, good to you. see you guys. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.